Elizabeth Hunstead is from Sioux Falls. She's a singer-songwriter. She went to SDSU, and she is sort of the poster child for the Sioux Falls Jazz and Blues Society. When she was in high school, she was in the All City Jazz Ensemble. She received a scholarship from the Sioux Falls Jazz and Blues Society. She came back and did all of our workshops. She came to all of our Q&As that we did with artists. And then she said, I'm going to major in music at SDSU. And then she calls us her senior year and says, I want to be your intern. And then after her internship, she graduates with her degree. She becomes a professional musician. And now she's going to perform on the main stage at Jazz Fest. So it's, it's a home run for us. Um, Elizabeth is a fantastic singer and a, a real popular artist here in Sioux Falls. We're also excited to bring back Indigenous this year. Uh, South Dakota's very own blues band. They performed at Jazz Fest in 1999, and uh, we thought it's about time to think about bringing them back. We went back and looked at different artists that have been um, really important staples in Jazz Fest, in the history of Jazz Fest, and Indigenous certainly was one of those bands. Multiple Native American awards, uh, music awards to their credit, strong new management, it's good to have Indigenous back. And then for the Jazz Camp, uh, we're bringing in Alan Vizzuti. Now, you maybe have not heard of Alan Vizzuti, but you've heard his music because he's played the trumpet on over 100 movie soundtracks. He's uh, performed with Doc Severinsen, he's performed with Chick Corea, so many other people. And although I'm about to say something that I don't totally understand, uh, he plays on level 12 of Halo 3. So if you pick up that game, spend several hours playing it, and you get to level 12, he plays all these really high, high notes in Halo 3. So whatever that means to you. It means a lot more to kids, I think. But the kids, the, the kids at Jazz Fest uh, and in the camp, will they like that idea quite a bit. And then we're also bringing back another great friend of the Sioux Falls Jazz and Blues Society, Mike Miller. Mike is a great guitar player. He's a native from Sioux Falls. He moved to Colorado, started meeting musicians like Tommy Bolin, uh, Bill Frizzell, uh, Gino Vanelli. And he moves out to L.A. and starts working with these musicians um, right away. Most recently, he's been uh, playing in Vegas with Ben Midler. And he's a fantastic artist. He comes back to Sioux Falls at least two or three times a year. And so Mike was one of those people who's been calling us and saying, I need to play at Jazz Fest. It's been a while. So we're happy to bring Mike back. Uh, one of my favorite stories about Mike uh, by the way, he's our the Sioux Falls Jazz and Blues Society's Lifetime Achievement Award winner as well. He's a recipient of that award. And uh, one of my favorite stories to tell you about Mike is that back in the uh, 80s when Nike was doing the Bo Nose commercials with Bo Jackson, and this was when they were trying to sell their cross-training shoes, and Bo Jackson was doing all these different things, Bo Diddley appears in one of those commercials. And they wanted Bo Diddley to appear in the commercial, but they also wanted to play his guitar. Well, Bo Diddley wanted a lot of money to play his guitar, but not so much just to appear in the commercial. So they hired Mike Miller to play the guitar for him. So when you listen to that TV spot on YouTube now, when you go back to your office, that's Mike Miller playing the Bo Diddley part. I always thought that was fun. And then we're bringing in some Afro-Cuban jazz. <coughs> Baraka and the Afro-Cuban Jazz Masters. This is a 12-piece, big African-Cuban band. And uh, he's born in Havana. His name is Orlando Valle. Um, he plays the flute. And I just thought, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, this sounded like it'd be a lot of fun. You know, you, you kind of want to, you know, <coughs> but I'm not going to, but you kind of want to. You, know, you kind of want to do that, that conga line going on here. But it's going to be a lot of fun. A big band, a big uh, Cuban band playing wonderful music and a lot of dance music uh, as they perform on Saturday. And then we're bringing in a, a guest artist, uh, Sharon Little. Sharon Little, just over a year ago, was just serving as a, she was a waitress in a bar. And uh, she's quickly discovered. Um, and now she's got the theme song for Annie's The Cleaner. She toured with Allison Krauss and Robert Plant, uh, along with T-Bone Burnett. Um, I can't wait to ask her what she learned from touring with Allison Krauss. 
in what she learned from Robert Plant. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that they were completely different experiences um, getting to talk to Robert Plant, who I think most of you know is the lead singer for Led Zeppelin. Um, Sharon Little is a, a real up-and-coming artist that we're excited to be bringing into Jazz Fest. And then for that smooth jazz fix, we have Jeff Lorber and Jeff Lorber Fusion. <clears throat> Jeff has been playing um, for so many years, he's been, and he's been on the top of the smooth jazz charts for that long as well. Um, Five-time Grammy Award uh, nominee for either Best uh, Contemporary Jazz or Best Pop Instrumental. And uh, he is a very tight friend with Mike Miller as well, so there could be some, some fun crossover there between those two bands that are coming. And then Anders Osborne. Anders Osborne is from Sweden, and he's an unusual character because you don't really can't classify him into any category of music very easily. He's played R&B, jazz, and blues, but he's also written uh, the number one song by uh, that Tim McGraw sang, "Watch the Wind Blow By." Um, he's all over the scope of music, uh, but he's another one of these big up-and-comers. I had more people contacting me and telling me that if I don't bring in Anders Osborne this year, it may be tough to get him. Um, so he's moving quickly. And then we're bringing back Terrence Simeon. Terrence Simeon and the Zydeco experience. Terrence is somebody, again, who played with us in 1999. Um, he calls him, he's the self-proclaimed ambassador, cultural ambassador of Louisiana. Um, he was a 2008 uh, Grammy Award winner for Best Cajun Music. And uh, Terrence, uh, if you don't remember, you know, he plays the accordion. This is very authentic Zydeco music. Um, Terrence likes to throw beads while he plays. And for those of you who might remember, he takes his shoes off and he throws beads with his feet into the crowd. So that alone is worth coming to Jazz Fest just to see Terrence do that. And uh, he has a new program called Creole for Kids, and he's going to also be performing with his entire band in the kids area later, earlier that afternoon. So it's going to be fun. See, uh, not only to uh, hear him on the main stage, but also to be able to see how they interact with all those kids at Jazz Fest, too. And now our headliners. Uh, our three headliners this year for Thursday night, we're bringing back our friends, the Fabulous Thunderbirds. Um, Kim Wilson has been the front man for the Fabulous Thunderbirds for many years. Uh, 1988 is when, 1998 rather, is when they appeared at Jazz Fest. Um, absolutely the most uh, fun people that we've had at Jazz Fest for a long time. Great uh, with the audience, knows how to please everybody. And, you know, Kim Wilson is such an amazing blues harp player that just alone, Kim Wilson is a great artist, so to be able to bring the Fabulous Thunderbirds back is a, a plus for us. They'll be appearing on Thursday night. And then on Friday, we're bringing back Little Feet. <coughs> Little Feet is a band that has, we've had over 40 or 50 emails every summer uh, about bringing back Little Feet. They came to us in 2004. They were established in 1969. And they have this following a lot like the Deadheads or a lot like, you know, um, the Grateful Dead has or, uh, or even, you know, the Almond Brothers. They describe themselves as California rock with Dixie-infected funk boogie, which sounds perfect for Jazz Fest. And then on Saturday night, we're bringing in the Funky Meters. Um, <laughs> the Masters of Funk. Um, these are the original band that, that really started funk. And uh, George Porter Jr., probably the first person to ever look down at his electric bass and say, I wonder what would happen if I pulled this string out and thumped it a little bit. And he got that real funky sound. He was one of the very first. Um, Art Cyril and Ian Neville um, are also part of this band and part of the core. And so, as you can imagine, it's uh, from New Orleans. They've headlined New Orleans and closed the show for over 25 years. Um, the Funky Meters are going to just be an amazing band. Um, the, the quality of the music is going to be such a great time, and um, they're going to be partnering with uh, Terrence a little bit because Terrence will be closing the show on Saturday night. So our headliners on Saturday will be the Funky Meters. 
So just to recap a couple of quick things, um, it's important that everybody remembers that we can't make Jazz Fest happen without sponsors and without donations from those people that come to Jazz Fest and also all the volunteers. Um, in the room are several of our volunteers that help us at Jazz Fest. It's important that we keep Jazz Fest free. It's one of the philosophies of the Sioux Falls Jazz and Blues Society is to make sure that Jazz Fest is free. And we do that because of the volunteers and the donations and the sponsors. So we need to thank them. And if you have a chance in what you do in your reports today to mention all those wonderful people that help make Jazz Fest successful, please remember the sponsors and the donations we get from people that come and those volunteers. I also want to mention the economic impact that Jazz Fest has in our community in the arts in general. Um, when we were a two-day event, we uh, were, uh, it was estimated that we bring in about a $5 million impact to the community. Now that we're three days, um, you know, I would assume that we're at least still at five, but probably closer to seven. We have a lot of folks who, uh, last year, you know, we had about 10,000 people who came to Jazz Fest on that first night, and that was a fantastic number for the first time we did a Thursday. So we expect it to grow this year a little bit. But the economic impact, you know, we have people again who call us and say, you know, we're going to make Sioux Falls part of our bigger vacation in South Dakota, so what else can we do? Can we go to Aberdeen, Watertown? What's happening in Pierre? What happens, you know, throughout the state uh, before they get to the Black Hills? So people actually come to Jazz Fest and make it part of a bigger, um, you know, uh, vacation idea. The other thing to keep in mind too is that we have people who contact us from all over the country coming to Jazz Fest. It's not just people from our area. Um, uh, about six or seven years ago, I had a letter from two ladies. They were staying right here at the Holiday Inn and they were from Regina, Saskatchewan. And they, they came down and said, what, what, what is there to do in Sioux Falls? We're here for the weekend. And they said, well, you must be here for the Jazz Fest. And they said, we don't know what the Jazz Fest. And they said, well, there's a shuttle leaving right there. It's free. They jump down the shuttle. They're both about 60 years old. They go to Jazz Fest, and they write me this beautiful letter about, we had no idea this was happening. But the, the food was fun. The music was great. The park was beautiful. Everybody was friendly. We're coming back. And they've sent me postcards the two or three times they've come back. And, you know, Regina is not that close, so it's a long haul. Um, but it was fantastic. Those are the kinds of things that help to remind us that the impact that we have, um, not only from the economy, but culturally is important. <coughs>